stocks, if you take a look, soaring. In fact, the Dow closing up more than 300 points. There is a list of firms, though, that have cut their year-end targets for the S&P 500. If you take a look, UBS, Goldman, RBC Capital, Bank of America, Credit Suisse. So clearly bearish sentiment even on days like today, is gaining. Some analysts point out that if stocks finish this year 2% below where they started, it would be the worst performance for the S&P 500 since 2008, when that index fell 38% amid the financial crisis. For the other side of the argument, we are going to bring in Market Bull, Brad McMillan, Commonwealth Financial Network CIO, Market Bear, Gary Kaltzbaum, who warned about the state of the markets. So Brad, you're the Market Bull. What makes you optimistic? Well, if you look at how little the market went down with everything that happened, think about this. China devalued. China had a stock market crash. We've got a major war in the Middle East. We've got Europe having immense political problems. And the market went down by what? A little over 10 percent? That, to me, says there's a lot of strength here, and it's driven by the strong fundamentals of the U.S. economy. We've seen the damage. All right, we've seen the damage, but Gary, as you have pointed out, we are all interconnected at this point. So if China slows, more than half of the Fortune 500 in the U.S. have exposure to that. Is that part of your worry about the future direction of stocks? Well, I think in the longer term, the biggest worry is what the Fed has created, and that is a big, gigantic asset bubble that we don't know what's going to be behind the door. The good news right now is Friday was what I call buy up the bad news, uh, where the market's recognizing there will be no Fed rate hike. So easy money, market rallies here. But I think what all we're doing right now is rallying up into resistance, and I worry what happens towards the end of October. But, hey, any upside right now is good upside. Okay, so let me ask you how hedge fund managers, in your view, both of you are performing because they are feeling the volatility. In fact, some managers facing their worst years so since the financial crisis. Here is a list. Year to date, I'll just go down. Bill Ackman's Pershing Square down 12 percent. David Einhorn's Greenlight down by 17 percent. Dan Loeb's the third point four percent all for the year so far. So what are the takeaways, if any, Gary, in your view? Uh, I call it the word liquidity. On the way down, there was hardly any liquidity, and that's why you had such vicious uh, drops to the downside. Now, interesting enough, it feels like there's no liquidity as we rally up, uh, and I think the market's just trading thin, and that's what I think these people were caught in. Just remember, most of them are very fully invested. Most of them do not diversify a lot, and I think that's what uh, caught them. But if the market continues to rally, they'll make a bunch back. All right, Brad, your take. I mean, the idea is these are longer term strategies, especially for the activists. They are not meant to be even quarter to quarter. They are meant to be year holds. I think it says a couple of things. First of all, many of these investors are invested in some of the same opportunities. So it argues to me that perhaps they're running out of a large number of opportunities. If they're focusing on a couple of different plays, then maybe there's not a ton of opportunities out there. Second of all, it seems to me they don't want volatility like this. They're willing to accept it, but they don't want it. So maybe they're being forced to take bigger chances than they would ideally prefer to. And that's interesting because that says that for them as investors, they're being forced into a corner but maybe they don't want to be in. All right. Well, we're going to take your words. We thank you very much. Brad McMillan joining us there. Gary Kaltbaum.